Uh, we continue to follow the shooting in Uvalde, Texas, that killed 19 children, two adults, and injured several others. Joining us now is Ken Cuccinelli, former acting deputy secretary for Homeland Security and national chairman of the Election Transparency Initiative. Ken, thanks so much for coming on today. We appreciate it. Um, so much to talk about, but first, I'd like to get your reaction to this horrific shooting. I understand apparently some of those first responders were actually border agents. Yeah, so Uvalde is right near the border. There's a border patrol facility there, um, and the border patrol has its own version of the SWAT team, BORTAC. Um, they, they have all along the border, they provide mutual aid to local law enforcement, and so they came swooping in um, as, as soon as they heard about it, as they do. They, uh, they don't ha necessarily wait on it, and... Um, I understand it was a Border Patrol agent who took down the shooter um, while taking incoming fire. So uh, they did their job yesterday. Yeah, our prayers are with them, too. Uh, and as you know, a number of lawmakers, including President Biden, have spoken out about this tragedy. Uh, Biden saying, uh, in part, why are we willing to live with this carnage and why do we keep letting this happen? And today, Beto O'Rourke, who's running for governor of Texas, um, interrupted a press conference in Uvalde this afternoon uh, to express his concern. Obviously, you know, can emotions are running high and, and with good reason. But, you know, I'm wondering, how do you think our leaders should be responding to this tragedy? And, and what message do you think they should be sending? Well, certainly uh, emotions are running high. Mine run high. But what Beto O'Rourke did was a juvenile stunt in, in, in among the worst taste you could possibly imagine under these circumstances. It is outrageous, disqualifies him for the office he's running for, uh, really pathetic, low class, and doesn't contribute to a discussion. Um, and what, I agree with the sentiment expressed by President Biden, something should be done. I worked for years in the mental health area, was one of the experts in the Virginia General Assembly when I was there. And, um, you know, there's a lot of work that can be done there to connect with law enforcement. With We're already reading about all the signs and signals this shooter gave off. Um, while this is shocking, in the case of this particular individual, the, it was not completely unforeseen. You didn't know he would do this but do something that would potentially violent. There were signs there. I would say, and I'll be very clear about it, um, until we're willing to uh, put arms in the hands of teachers um, and or other employees at the school who are willing to get trained to be in that position, um, we're going to continue to see this. I would point all the way back to the 1970s when Palestinian terrorists were attacking Israeli schools. They trained teachers to carry and use uh, sidearms, and it stopped immediately. Um, the, everybody, crazy people included, know that we have created soft target zones in various places, like at schools, most notably, and um, where we keep our most valuable citizens, our children. And it's time that we stepped up and let those who are present defend themselves. And um, that is not what you're going to hear from President Biden, um, but it is a better solution. It's one consistent with protecting the rights of Americans and the safety of our children. Yeah, Ken, I, I want to just pivot. I mean, so much more we can talk about when it comes to all this, yeah. for sure. Uh, but one thing I do want to talk about um, is the primaries. Yesterday was primary day for a number of states, including Georgia. And uh, Georgia has really been the focus of controversy over questions about both voting rights and election integrity. I know this is an issue that you've been following very closely. Uh, I want to get your thoughts um, on the primaries and the turnout, and how do you see this transitioning into November? So, first of all, it, it is important for a couple of reasons. One, you know, we are just talking about Beto O'Rourke. He was part of the crowd saying, that the election reforms in places like Georgia, and the reason you say it was a focus of uh, on this issue is because uh, you were correct. Last year, the left started attacking the Georgia legislature when they started cleaning up their elections. They have a lot more to do. 
but they took some basic steps and they all told us, oh, this is voter suppression. It'll reduce turnout among minorities, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I got news for you. Minorities showed up in record numbers. They blew the turnout through the roof in Georgia. It completely wipes out the argument that cleaning up our elections with the kind of reforms that we've advocated at the Election Transparency Initiative that I lead uh, will lower voter participation. In fact, it gives people more confidence that their votes count and count legally. And when you look ahead to November, we know from history that uh, the side that's turning out more in the primaries turns out more in the general, especially in these non-presidential years, these midterm elections. So it bodes very well on the Republican side. I think actually the outcomes are being underestimated right now in terms of the impact um, on the Republican side. That doesn't mean every Republican is, you know, as I'd be in this as enthusiastic about as some others, but that's the way this is going to go with Democrats in control at the national level and the incredible problems from inflation to the border to you name it um, that are laid at their feet. Uh, they are going to lose an enormous number of seats, both in state houses and at the national level in Congress. And uh, so it's going to be quite a carnage for them come the end of the year. Well, Ken, unfortunately, running out of time. Uh, great, as always, having you on. God bless you. Good to be with you. Thank you.